I'm in my new body. Let's see if the molecular reconstruction circuit works. What's up, collectors? P Rockzilla back again for another review, and today we're gonna take a look at the Diamond Select Toys Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mini Mates Technodrome box set. This is the second set in this new series from Diamond Select, and with that in mind, I want to thank Diamond Select Toys, the good folks at Diamond Select Toys, for giving me the opportunity to take a look at this figure and make a quick review on it to see how I feel because I'm a big Ninja Turtles fan, and I saw the first box set, the Blimp set at New York Comic Con this past year, and oh man, that the way the box looked caught my attention right away, and I'm loving the route they're going with these boxes. As you can see, the Technodrome's here, and if you read in the back, the Turtle Van is going to be the last one in this series. I cannot wait to see what that looks like, because these box sets are classic flashbacks to the cartoons, so when you, if you were like a big fan like me, and you, this thing will like catch your attention from across the room. So, before we get that started, I hope you like, uh, I'm sorry. Please hit the like, subscribe button, click the bell notification. And with that in mind, let's get this review started. Dale, got a little excited there. What's up, fellow collectors? Die, And as always, let's go ahead and take a look at the box before we get the figures out the box. And as I said previously, this is a cool looking box. Look at that ter Technodrome right there. I'm almost said Terradrome. Look at that Technodrome. Look at the eye there. Now, this is one piece. I remember as a kid, this is one piece I did not have when I was collecting my Ninja Turtle figures. Um, and just seeing this is always is like a cool flashback to not only the figures, but that one piece I never got. I'm like, I wanted that ter Technodrome. I said Terradrome again. The Technodrome. I wanted that Technodrome so bad as a kid. But... This is a cool piece right here. In the side right there, you get Leonardo, one of the pieces in here. You get a Diamond Select logo right there. Ninja Turtles, Mini Mates. And then right in the top, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Heroes in the Half Shell, Turtle Power, Mini Mates. Right in the bottom, you get all that legal information right there. And then right in the back, ages eight and up. And you get this cool little piece right here. So this is a series one. I have these already. This is series two. I like the fact they're giving us crank. That's a cool one. And not only good, the good one of the good things about this is you don't have to worry about army building because they make you do it already. The, each series comes with a foot soldier. So you definitely have three foot soldiers at least, which is usually the good minimum for me. At least three foot soldiers. And one cool thing is you pull this up right here and it gives you a nice little story right here. I'll go ahead and move this in so you can pause it and read it. They're the world's most fearsome fighting team deep beneath the bustling of New York City. Leonardo leaves the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles search for the evil alien Krang. I'll let you guys read the rest. And right there, you can see a picture of the other figures in this series. This is going to be a cool one here. As, the other, as my boy Raphael. Usually, they say Michelangelo Donatello for last, but this time they gave us Donatello first. All right. And then right in the front, you get a nice little picture of Krang right there. And then right here, you can see this little slip cover comes off. And you get a nice little window of the Mini Mates right there. All right, let's go ahead and get these guys out the box. We're going to take a close look in 4K at all the details of these figures. And once you get them out the box, Ruth, with one clamshell, you can see right there, nicely laid out all the figures right there and their accessory pieces. Definitely cool. See in the back, you see shred oh, Shredder, Splinter's Tail. I was intrigued how to do cranks. Cranks are usually bigger, but it looks like they're all the same size. They're all approximately about two inches tall. All right, let's go ahead and take these guys out. So we're going to take a close look at the figures. And there we have all the figures laid out with all the accessories and their stands or bases, whatever you want to call them. So let's go ahead and look at Rocksteady first. So this is a newer piece that I was more intrigued with when I heard about this set right here. Because I always like D-Bot Rocksteady. They're my, my, my two favorite uh, villains, I guess, next to um, Rat King. But he looks pretty cool. Looks pretty cool. Ne definitely pretty, you know, good detail right there in the face for such a small piece. You can see the teeth right there on the side. You can see how mad and mean he looks right there with the eyebrows. And the, you can see the nose, the horns. You got the strap all around him right here. The grenade, the turtle shell, the sword in the back. Definitely looks like Rocksteady. Got the little belly, the little peep eye sticking out, the little belly there. Got the cargo pant pockets right there. 
So definitely looks cool. And we'll look at, at his articulation. They should all have the same articulation. Obviously, some are be, you know, they're molded a little bit different, sculpted a little bit different. So some are gonna have a little bit different articulation, like Crane. So definitely go over Crane's articulation and Rock Steady too. So this is basically a different body. So the head can go full 360 because you can take the head off. Obviously, there's no not really much up and down because you know it's a little mini mate Lego type thing. The arms can go pretty far up, not that far up, just pretty about there. So you can do the T pose. You get single bend at the elbows. You get twist at the shoulder. Then you get twist with him. Oh, actually, you do get some twist at the waist, but you have to detach the piece a little bit, as you can see there. The legs. Do go uh, about a little bit of a split. Feet, legs can go all the way forward and all the way back. So you can, he could definitely do the aerobic split. And then you do get the single bend at the knee, as you can see right there. So pretty cool poses. You can get these figures in. And one thing I do like, which I will show you in the final poses, is usually these stands, these bases, whatever you want to call these, are very good they're very well made where the peg actually fits in there perfectly and you can have them basically at one foot and he'll hold the pose not fall out the peg so definitely a cool piece right there and he does come with the, the typical gun that they all come with with that chrome paint on there metallic paint it's a soft plastic so it is malleable you can easily switch uh slide into the hands take it off just be careful you don't want to chip the paint too much as you can see there and that basically slides into his hand right just like that as you can see right there, there you go. So there goes Rocksteady holding his rifle. All right, let's go ahead and move to the one I'm intrigued to, and that's Crane. Coming out of the box, he really looked and felt a little weird, as you can see, because look at that body. It looks like he has, like, some kind of poncho on. So I, I thought mine was just loose and I had to, like, squeeze it in more, more, but it's just the way they made it, just a bigger body. And I like the way they put the chrome on there too. The chrome, same as the as the uh the guns and everything. They put the chrome on the shoulder pads and the visor, the little antenna on his head. You see Krang right there. Yeah, he's a little bit sculpted, so it's not like a sticker. So you actually do feel him in there. Would have been cool if he actually had like the hands you can articulate a little bit that stick out. That would have been something cool. And then it just looks a little funky with this little uh, like I said, this poncho looking thing on there. But as you can tell, the type of character he is. This is probably the only way they can get him accomplished and made. So there we go. So let's look at his articulation. So his arms, same as Rocksteady, can go up to there. Same bend. Same bend at the shoulder. And I just want to see, is there anything different? So his waist articulation, same thing. So he's not really too much hindered. And at the same time, too, this suit, he doesn't do anything like dynamic, like, you know, no backflips and stuff like that. So because of that, you know, oh, no, that came right off. All right, so that came off right there. Got to be careful with that. Oh, oh this, is, this came apart right there. All right, so he's going to be one of the ones that, you know, you got to be careful as you mess around with him. He could start falling apart. So like I said before, the legs don't really move forward much. And like I said, you can't really, you mean, you don't really have Crane doing much with this in this suit. But you do get bend there, and then you do get some twist. As you can see, twist there at the knee and thigh. And yeah, so no articulation at the neck because you can see it's one whole piece. So there's Krang. Krang does not come with any accessories, so it's just him. Him and the robot body. All right, cool piece. Definitely something different. Funky looking, but definitely something different. And always cool to have Krang in the android body. All right, we already all we looked at this foot soldiers already, but I'll show you real quick how the foot soldier looks. Definitely looks like the foot soldier. Same color palette. Same chrome right there. Definitely looks cool. And then he comes with the same. Now, this is one thing I do wish was different. I do wish that the actual um rifles were different, at least for Rocksteady. But he comes with the same one that Rocksteady has. Same way it slides. Oops. Slides right in there, just like the other one. And sometimes they're a little bit snug, but you can get it in there. There you go. Then he does come with his own Cantana, as you can see here. And this one's painted chrome all the way through. Same thing, can fit here. Now, from my experience with the other set, the foot soldier is the one that actually had more of the issue with posing because, like, you know, things just kept coming off. But this one feels a little more sturdy. So maybe it was just that other foot soldier. But he can definitely get the, you know, same articulation at the legs. And then his head, obviously, you get more articulation at, with his head because it's basically just one big piece. 
You could definitely do the 360 with his. This is stuck on there. You can basically take it off once you take the head off. And then the waist articulation. So this one actually feels better than the other one I had. So there goes the foot soldier. Now let's move to Leonardo. Here we have Leonardo. And <laughs> this is one thing that always bugged me out at first. When I first saw these, I thought the bandana was upside down. I was like, wait, why is, why is it like, you know, like straight line here? But then if you remember the cartoons, usually their snout, their nose stick out more. So that kind of makes that circle there. So that's the reason why it's like that. But definitely that blue pops on Leonardo. Man. I like the way that blue looks, especially with that green. And here's the shell on Leonardo. You can see the shell is not fully attached with the belt there because that's the way the figure was made. And the fact that you could basically take this apart and, you know, kit bash your own type of little uh, mini mate. But yeah, so there he goes right there. Leonardo, same articulation as the other guys. Obviously, no waist articulation because of the shell. As you can see here, oh, he has like a little bit right here. But definitely cool piece. I love the weight. Now, this is one thing that was annoying too with Donatello is these elbow pads, man, because they keep sliding up and down. So there's times when they can slide all the way down or slide all the way up. And then it does, you got to make sure you put push them all the way up if you want to get some bent at the elbow. Because if not, you do put them there. It could kind of hinder, see, could kind of hinder their articulation. So let's push that up and there you go. So there's Leonardo. And the cool thing is, unlike the foot soldier, his katanas, his swords are actually different. So thankfully, they at least painted this to make this stand out a little bit more than this. Because it would have sucked to have Leonardo and the foot soldier have the same sword. And I kind of wish that they actually, like I said with Donatello, I wish they had his slots here. We could actually put the swords on their back. That would be definitely cool. Because you don't always really want to have them with their weapons in their hand. So it would have definitely been cool if they actually gave us like something they could just slide in there. Or just to have his swords on there. But they don't. And more than likely, I'll have all my turtles with their weapons in hand. And with that in mind, we'll go ahead and put these weapons in his hand to see how easy, like butter, these weapons slide in. So there you go. There's Leonardo. All right. Last but not least, let's look at Master Splinter. Master Splinter has that. Look at that face. That's a cool different face because it actually has like that worried look on his face where he's worried about the turtles. Flat on top. His head does articulate because it does come off. So definitely wish we had like whiskers painted on there. That's one thing that they probably couldn't improve on. But definitely looks cool. The suit is a soft plastic. The robe, I mean. The tail is attached to that robe, as you can see there. So it does give you a little bit of articulation at the tail right there. As you can see, it's attached to the robe. And then the arms can move up a good amount. Same as everybody else. Regular bend at the elbow, just like everybody else. The legs can... Actually, he has more freedom because the robe... Since the robe is so wide, it's not really rubbing against the robe. And then let's see his waist articulation. Let's see if he could... Yep, same waist articulation. So there is Splinter. And let's look at his cane. So this is definitely cool to have a cane. It would be cool if it slides out and you get the little, the little knife or sword in there. But definitely need to have Splinter with his cane. And let's see how that goes in his hand. Yeah, this one's a little bit tougher because it's, the cane is a little wider. So maybe, so it would fit this way right here. But if you want to slide down more, you're going to basically bend this hand out a little bit more. So it's up to you if you want to put stress on that hand. But here's the cane. Here's Splinter with the cane. All right, there we go. There's all the figures, all the detail in the figures and all the accessories. Let's go ahead and do a quick size comparison. There we have the set standing in default poles ready for size comparison. So let's go ahead and start bringing some figures in. I'm going to bring in a NECA figure first. And this is going to be the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon rock study. I want to sh show you guys real quick how accurate that rock study figure is compared to the actual cartoon one. Next, let's bring in some other mini mates. And the first one I'm going to bring in is the G.I. Joe Cobra Commander mini mate. Now let's go ahead and bring in a Transformers mini mate, and this is going to be the RC mini mate. And last but not least, let's go ahead and bring in a one six scale figure, and this is going to be the Hot Toys one six scale Grogu, of course. So there we go, good size comparison to other figures. Just in case you have any of these other figures in your current collection, and you're curious of how these mini mates will fit in your collection or display. All right, let's go ahead and get the final thoughts. And final poses.
For this final pose, I just want to have them lined up real quick so you get a nice 360 view of these little mini mates. Uh, coming into this, I do enjoy. I did enjoy the first line. This line, I was very intrigued because I really, really, really need that Krang. Uh, if you're a turtle collector, you know Krang is one of those few figures, especially in the Android body. That's usually doesn't come out often. And when he does, you you want to grab him quick because he usually tends to become harder to find as time goes on. I do like the fact that they actually somewhat it's a mixture of sculpt and paint for the actual brain portion of Krang that's in the in the belly. I'd rather prefer that than actually just have him painted on there. But I do wish they did something a little bit better with that little apron looking thing that overlaps the crank body. Uh, I wish they like had some kind of clips on the side that you could clip it together so it could be more snug on there. Um, if you're going to take pictures of this or display this figure, I would definitely would recommend trying to avoid try to avoid getting pictures or displaying them with the side showing because it is a little ugly. But I can see that this was the only way to get able to get this accomplished for such a big body. So I do appreciate their, their attempt to do it. And it was like they're eighty percent there, in my opinion. They just need some kind of clip or something that can attach the two sides together. Uh, Leo, like I said before, I just wish the belts on these turtles had slots for their weapons, because not always do you want to have them, you know, display or take pictures of them with the weapons in hand. It's always cool to have the weapons displayed on their back. Uh, but other than that, like I said, I wasn't sure what I was gonna get into with this line right here. I uh, saw them in New York Comic Con, didn't even know these things were even a thing in the collecting world. So I'm happy I came across them. And I do feel that, in my opinion, they are a little bit better than the Legos because they have a little more detail and more articulation. And it just it's, it's an obscure Ninja Turtle piece that I think any Turtle fan would appreciate and ha like to have in their collection. So this is the cool thing with these mini-mates is that you can actually add them with the other ones you do have and create these cool little battle like battle scenes right here. You see Cran there. Yelling commands at Shredder. You see Shredder looking at Splinter as Splinter decapitate one of the foot soldiers. You see Leo fighting the other foot soldier right there. He's about to decapitate that one also. You see Donatello trying to take care of Bebop and Rockstar. You see Bebop and Rockstar with the guns there. You see Rockstar trying to pull his sword out saying, I want to get up and close a personal for this one. And there in the back there you see April O'Neil without Vern calling the actions, the play-by-play -play, as the battle just unveils itself in front of her face right now. So definitely cool to have these all together. Nice little battle scene I have here going on here. Um, and it's pretty cool. I know the turtles are outnumbered, obviously here, but as you guys know, the turtles can you know they can handle themselves. Usually they are outnumbered, and they usually come out victorious at the end. So with this, I like this, Mary. I cannot wait to get the other set completed so I can have a full battle scene going on here. And definitely we'll be doing a review for that other set when it comes in. But this is what these are made for. Just to mess around with, have fun, not worry about breaking any pieces or any pieces falling apart because these pieces are all interchangeable. So definitely something relaxing, no stress. You don't have to worry about accessories missing, stuff like that. This is just something you can just get out and freaking create a battle scene and just have your imag imagination wander and just have fun with it and no worries. And you can just leave it there if you want. And then, you know... Have them displayed in the battle scenes, have them displayed standard default pose. So, definitely something cool that Diamond Select is giving us Turtle fans. And with that in mind, I want to thank Diamond Select for giving me the opportunity to review this set right here. Awesome piece. And thank you for introducing me to these mini maids because I definitely would and will continue to collect the Turtle ones, the Transformers ones, more than likely G.I. Joe ones too, and then see what else they come up with, with uh, down the line. I know they have some other series in the works. So if you're intrigued, look at the description. I'm going to put a description right here on the screen. It's gonna, I mean, the link's going to be in the description. I'm going to just put it on the screen as a reminder. So you can check out, you can go check out the Diamond Select Toys website to pick up this set and see what else they have coming in the future with these mini mates. If you're into this mini mate stuff. So with that in mind, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please hit that like, subscribe button, click that bell notification. And as always, collectors, keep collecting, stay safe, be good, dale! Turtle power.